in a spectacular long-term experiment by the bacteriologist Richard Lenski and his colleagues at Michigan State University. Scientific research nowadays is often a team effort. In what follows, I may sometimes use the name Lenski for brevity, but you should read it as Lenski and the colleagues and students in his lab. As we shall see, the Lenski experiments are distressing to creationists, and for a very good reason. They are a beautiful demonstration of evolution in action. Something it is hard to laugh off, even when your motivation to do so is very strong. And the motivation for dyed-in-the-wool creationists is very strong indeed. We actually look at, let's use, are you familiar with Lenski's experiment? Like, um, what do you know about Lenski experiment, uh, the Lenski E. coli experiments, Nate? Well, well they, there were populations that improved their overall fitness and some populations that did not, that went extinct. In a narrow sense, there were some adaptations yeah. observed. In all 12 experimental populations, the functional bacterial genome size has shrunk. Like there's literally less total information. You know, they've actually lost genes for adaptive purposes. But at the end of the day, the net effect in the long run is degeneration. So I, I understand that according to your philosophy that that's still evolution. Sorry, is that in the study that there's degeneration? Yes, Any yeah. it, it talks about that. For, um, for every single population? The 12 experimental populations, the, the functional bacterial genome has shrunk. It is documented and a lot of it was due to loss of, of, of biological functions, loss of, yeah. well, I mean, reductive evolution is, is known in bacteria. You can just, you can look for papers, reductive evolution in, in bacteria and you'll get a ton of, of papers. Bacteria are just known to do that. You know, they'll lose genes, especially in artificial environments, you know, genes that are not necessary in, in that environment. Um, they'll adapt by losing, losing genes. It's, it's adaptive optimization. But to be honest with you, it's, it's eventually stasis. I think it's called escape from adaptive conflict. Matt, um, is, is, am I using that term correctly? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's when a gene usually has about four to five different functions, but it drops and reduces itself to just one. Yeah, that's kind of what the bacteria did because now those bacteria in Lenski's experiment, they were only fed one type of food, so they got lazy. They actually don't move, and they can never live in their original environment with like the other bacteria can again. All bad for them. So I know, so Snake, you love, yeah, great points, Matt. You love to go to the fossil record, you know, to validate, you know, universal common ancestry. But if we look at the, the long-term E. coli experiment, I... I think it's, well, it's, it's more than 60,000 generations now. Matt, what is it, about 100,000 generations now? More. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's way up there. It's about, it's approaching almost uh, 2 million years of human evolution. So what's funny is this famous evolutionary experiment, okay, proves that in deep time, which you're looking to, Snake, when you look to the fossil record, even given a model population that would, should be optimal for validating evolution, proves that populations don't evolve and instead they devolve. So I understand that you, that you stand by your philosophy, but based on this real time observable experiment, it's science fiction. You know, it's, it's, well, it actually proves evolution. that they survive a lot longer than they should if there was a uh, genetic um, entropy. Uh, but it, I don't, I don't think this is really that productive because I can admit like that there is genetic entropy we yeah. there might there might be a time limit on life forms, um, but that doesn't really comment on evolution. Like I could even give you that the dating in the fossil record is off. Uh, that doesn't really affect the theory of evolution. See, but the thing is, you know, you said that that fitness was increased in in this experiment, right? But the thing is, you can even look at the paper. Like this fitness increase, it, it's only in a narrow sense versus a broad sense because in, in broad sense. If you're going to, the matter. best definition of fitness is total functionality. Would you not agree? Uh, that seems kind of like a word salad. Okay. Well, what's your best? The best definition of fitness should be total functionality, not just well, looking at a single trait. Fitness for your environment. Right. Right. So the fitness for this environment was um, like if, if you use the full meaning of fitness, total functionality given this environment. All 12 of the population have experienced a net loss of function. And so they have reduced total functionality as needed in the real world. Okay. Yes. To adapt to this environment, they've lost genes, but bacteria do that in, in the real world too. So real world. Well, they, total they've, gained function, 
gain function in some genes and a lot of in the genes that they've lost function for, I mean, those can be beneficial mutations. There are loss of functions that are beneficial. Well, you're, yes, according to like your belief system, you know, losing genes and, you know, breaking down pre existing functional systems is going to take your bacteria like organism to a biologist, but there's no science to support that. In, in our new house, we tore down, just one sec, in our house, new house, you know, we're doing renovations, we tore down the wall that separates the kitchen and the living room. That was adaptive. But guess what? We destroyed that wall that separates the two rooms in order to make a bigger room. Now, at the end of the day, if someone told me, how'd you build the house? And I told them that, well, that's not explaining how I build the house. That's just, it's just like these bacteria, you know, it's, it's, it's a net loss of information. You look to a trade-off, of course, but the question is, is the trade-off sustainable? And obviously it's not because if fitness is increasing in, in a very narrow sense, okay, you know, a certain portions of the genome is increasing in fitness, but the greater portion is simply just losing information and degenerating. Well, at the end of the day, if it comes down to a net gain versus a net loss, that's a net loss of fitness. And, you know, you can disagree and say, oh, that's evolution. You know, that's how evolution works. But there's there's no science to actually back that up. You know, the, the, the longest, the long-term E. coli experiment, the, the largest evolutionary experiment there is currently proves creation. Not only, you know, mutations at the end of the day, they're not, you know, construction, they're, they're destructure. But if we actually look at, say, a real-time example, say, let's use... Uh, Lenski's long-term bacterial experiment, if you're um, familiar with that. So we know that, a, you know, a very uh, trivial adaptation happened because what it was, was it was optimal growth on, on a given medium, right? But Lenski's bacteria, what they actually did was they shrank in genome size. So in other words, the functional genome, it actually decreased. So it became evident with, with this experiment, and, and they're still observing it, that the more rapid growth in these bacteria, it was actually very much and significantly accomplished through genetic degeneration. So it's actually a fact, too, that many useful genes, say not essential in that artificial environment of, of Lenski's experiment, they're actually lost, which means at the end of the day, not only are they lazy and, and they're handicapped in that environment when transferred to a natural environment those highly degenerated bacteria they would certainly be dead on arrival so right there is you know real-time evidence of that genetic degeneration which once again i'm just saying is consistent with the biblical model and i don't understand how natural selection is going to be able to stop this degradation problem like do you have a solution to it um and, and how do you feel about the Len, the, the Lenski uh, example? Are you familiar with Len, Lenski's experiment? Go ahead. From what I understand, as far as the Lenski experiment goes, uh, the bacteria broke off into another species, and there were like what, like a couple generations of evolution. Lenski, he, he for for younger creationists, I would say he dem he demonstrated macro evolution. He demonstrated evolution on, on a large scale. Um, so that, that that's pretty much how I understand it. Well, at the end of the day, if because this aerobic citrate digestion by bacteria, that was the big one that was seen. If it involves, say, the loss of control of, of the normal anaerobic citrate digestion, and it's a, you know, sure it's an adaptation, but it's a very much, you know, degenerative adaptive change, you know, that's not going to, uh, you know, take your fish to fishermen. Because if we're seeing, you know, losses of information, we're seeing genetic degeneration, you know, that's no help to, large scale evolution, because obviously we agreed that, you know, the word evolution means a change in allele frequency in populations over generations. But if these changes are degenerative, that's more consistent with a young earth creation model, because obviously there's a shelf life on these genomes if we're accumulating these these mutations. Right. It, it, right. Right. Now, now going back to Richard Dawkins, does he ever give any examples of of evolution producing more information, more complexity it, with, you know, random mutations producing more information or complexity. Well, he was, he was once stumped on that very issue and that's a quite a well-known video clip and it really was as, as the video clip uh, looked, he could not answer that question of where the new information came from. And even the, the examples he now gives, uh, like uh, 
uh, bacteria that can digest uh, citrate, which they couldn't before, but it turns out they always had the ability to digest citrate, but most of the time that ability was turned off because it would waste resources to do that, and it's turned on only if in an absence of oxygen, um, because if you've got oxygen, you may as well use, do something else for energy, no point wasting citrate, which is low efficiency, but uh, what happened with these new bacteria is that control switch got damaged and the citrate eating was turned on perpetually. Now that means that if there was nothing else to eat besides citrate, it would, these bacteria would thrive. But again, it's still a downhill change. It's not a new ability. It's actually a loss of, of the, um, the switch that normally turns off that thing. So imagine, um, your car, if you had a car alarm, now if you had a switch, uh, that only turned on when the car was disturbed. Well, that's the way it should be. But what if the switch was on, comp- was was broken, and the alarm sounded continuously? Well, it might actually keep burglars away, but it still would be a horrible car to drive if you couldn't turn that nose <laughs> off. This is what's actually happened. It's like a, a alarm switch that hasn't that can't be turned off. Uh, interesting. And so, is that okay? That's one example, supposedly, and really, it's it's a loss of information. Exactly. Yeah. Is is that the best he has? That is that's a, he spends a lot of time on that one. A lot of other other evolutionists have spent a lot of time on that particular example, which in fact that's one of the best they have, and it turned out not to be an increase. So Lenski's experiment: have they lost genes, deletions? Have their genomes shrank in, in functional genome size? This is the experiment to look at. Can you explain that to me? There there has been some. Uh, genome reduction, I believe, in uh, the like, experiment. Okay. Yeah, that's so there's been some genome reduction, deletions have been observed. All 12, I think it's 12 uh, populations, uh, experimental populations, the, the functional bacterial genome has shrunk in size, it contains less total information. You just agree with that. 